This is a cash flow question, um, just to help if any students finding it difficult with the cash flow. Um, this is a, an exam question, so we see here on the left, this is the top part of the page. It's just a, a lot of obviously detail about a company. A lot of this isn't needed for obviously producing the cash flow itself, but you would need this information for theory questions that would follow. The only thing that I'm going to highlight is that this company, NPF, is set up as basically a foundation. And so what it does is that it's a not-for-profit organization and they take their money and they invest it into educational opportunities for children. So this is technically a not-for-profit uh, who is going to have income. And obviously, like any charity, the vast majority or all of their income will then be given out to somebody else. And so it's not a normal, a normal organization where we look at income and we look at expenditure and we find the profit left at the end of it. Uh, they're obviously going to take their income as a charity and they're going to give it towards uh, their cause, which is just, I suppose, something to point out because it's going to be a little bit, um, it's just something we're going to have to, we'll see later on for their expenses. They're going to be getting rid of their income. Anyway, for the rest of it, we're just going to uh, forget about the extract because it'll just, you know, obviously it'll drag out this question too long. Let's focus on the figures and let's do a actual cash flow. Okay, so the cash flow's aim is to find out how much cash a company has left at the end of a period. And we're given the period from June to November and we need to find out at the end of each month how much cash the company will have. There's obviously two things that we're going to look at, cash in and cash out. So we know that it is from May to November, uh, sorry, June to November. And uh, at the start, we're just focusing on our cash in. So how much money do they have coming in? All this information down here is separate for now. The only thing they give us about income is the donations because they're a charity, they're giving donations. And so their donations for each month are listed here. So obviously all I need to do is just put in donations and put in the amount for each month as they're given. After that, the next thing is talking about transferring the donations to obviously the education, you know, they are a charity, so they're going to transfer their donations to somebody else. But that is technically cash out. That's just more information. And none of this is cash in either. These are all expense at the bottom. Uh, this is donations received to May. We'll get into that after, but we're not asked to produce something for May. That's an opening balance. All we're asked to do so far is get the cash in for this company for each month, and we've done that. After that, you've no more cash inflows. And so we'll just do a total, total cash inflows here. Very straightforward so far. It's only one inflow. After that, our next heading is cash outflows. And so obviously for this now, we need to see the amount of money that they are spending. One of the big things, again, because they're a charity, they're actually taking this income and they're giving it, you know, towards the educational opportunities. So just like any charity, the money's been given back out. And so these donations are transferred to the educational projects one month after they've been received. So one month after you receive this money in June, you hand it over to the educational opportunities. <clears throat> and that's why they've told us um, what's received in May. Because what was received in May, we're going to be paying to the educational opportunities. We're going to be paying it out to the charity, basically, whoever needs it. We're going to be paying for that in the next month, which is June, because we pay for our income one month after we receive it, we hand it back to the charity. Educational projects receive 95% of all donations. So not all of the income is going to the charity. Obviously, they need to have some income in order to function as a business. So they're keeping 5% and they're not for profit. So it's not for them. It's just to pay for all these things. So all we're going to do now is going to look at the fact that they're handing their donations back out to the educational projects. So that's going to be our first donation transfers, our first expenditure. And what they're doing is they're transferring it one month after they've received it, and they're transferring 95%. So to make this straightforward, for the first month, if I just showed you a little bit of workings here, the first month we'll focus at is May. 
because whatever they receive in May, they're going to be paying out in June, and 95% of it. So if we take the number 50, which is what they received in May, and we multiply it by 95%, I'm just showing this on Excel, that's how we show it, uh, the number would be 47.5. If I do June, it's going to be 40 that I received in June, I'm going to multiply that by 95%, and so it will be 38. So the 40 that I received in June, 38 of that would be transferred the next month, which is obviously July, as a donation. So I've done all these figures already, and we'll see them here. These are the figures for each month. We can see that if I receive money in May, I transfer 95% of it in June. And obviously there on in October, I received 20, 95% of that is 19. November I received 10, but we're not dealing with that because I'll be transferring that in December. Okay, we've dealt with the first part. That's the first, and it's definitely the most complicated part of this. After that, they tell us the opening balance. Let's deal with that at the end. They already told us what I received in May so that we can calculate it here. Another expense. So this is again the actual the second expense after the donation transfers. The second expense is internet usage. We're paying one to be paid in June and September. So all I've done here is the internet usage. Oh, sorry, I've done web design first. Um, all right, wrong order. Doesn't matter. Web design fees is 0.5 per month. I'll go through these. They're very straightforward. Maintenance fees is 0.25 per month. These are in millions, obviously. So it doesn't matter. You just copy the figures in. And sponsoring a concert is five, and it's to be paid in November. So I'm not actually sure which order I put these in. Maintenance 0.25 per month. Uh, the next one, internet usage fees, as we said, one to be paid in June and the one to be paid in September. And the last one here will be sponsorship of the concert, five to be paid in November. None of these are complicated. You're told the information and you copy and paste it in, essentially. Okay, after that, I have all my cash flow and I want to see the total. This is all the money that they've spent. So the total income is here, total inflow. And the total outflow of cash is here and i've added it up for each month and so obviously if you find out how much money the cash is made for each month and you find out how much money the cash is spent each month you're going to want to find out how much money they had left there's one thing to bear in mind first before june started how much cash did they have and that's going to be important to look at as well so that's the last thing that we'll be adding in it will be opening balance but for now We'll be looking at how much money they made per month, how much money they spent per month. And we call this the net cash flow or net monthly cash flow. So all you're doing here is you're looking at it and saying, for June, they made 40. For June, they spent 49.25. So obviously they spent an additional 9.25. And so it's negative. It should be shown in brackets, but Excel, that's awkward. So just put a minus sign. Uh, minus 9.25 that you'll show in brackets because that is the net, it's the difference, and it's a negative because we spent more. 30 aim flow, 38.75, therefore it's a negative 8.75. I'll go through these bit by bit to make it straightforward. It's the same thing. This one's going to be positive, a positive 0.75. We earned additional amount of money. This one is going to be negative 10.25. This one here is going to be positive again, 0.25. And this one here is going to be inflow 10, outflow of 24.75, that's negative 14.75. None of that is actually complicated. You're just taking the inflow and the outflow, and it's the difference. So, so far, all we've done is take the inflow, total it. Take all the outflows and total it. We had a little bit more complications here because we had to donate it the next month, and it was 95%. But that's not a common, you know requirement for any other question and it's if you read through it it's, it's very straightforward if you think about what a charity will actually do with their money and from that we're able to tell how much they've made per month as i said one thing not to forget is what do they start with whenever they start with the opening cash and so the opening cash is one we've been told that in june they started with one million and the very last thing we're going to look at now is closing cash. So, think of this. A company starts with a million. Throughout the month, they overspend by 9.25. You start with one million, 
and then you overspend by 9.25. At this point, we can see that we start with a million and now we're in a deficit of 8.25. Because I've had a million, and then I went off and I overspend by 9.25 for the month. And so what's left at the end of the month in their bank account, or their cash, or how much they owe? In this case, they owe 8.25. So that is the 31st of June, or 30th of June. So the 30th of June, they've ate minus 8.25 uh, in terms of their bank balance. That's going to be the exact same on the 1st of July. Whatever they finish with on the 30th of June, they're going to start with on the 1st of July. And so on the 1st of July, it's also the same figure, minus 8.25. After this, it gets very repetitive. This is what they start July with. On 31st of July, they had overspent for the month by 8.75. If I add those up, it's minus 17. The difference... Uh, sorry, the, the total of them added up. They had minus eight, just over minus eight at the start, and they went off and they overspent by nearly nine million. And so by the end of July, 31st of July, they had 17 million overspent. 31st of July is the exact same as the 1st of August. They had minus 17 million overspent, but this time they made a little bit of a profit of three quarters of a million. So at the end of the month, again, straightforward, just checking the difference, minus 16.25 because they have reduced their deficit. So that is the 31st of August, 1st of September is the exact same figure. You just wake up the next day, nothing's changed. You start the month with minus 16.25, and again, they've had another big deficit of minus 10.25 in September. So by the third date of, this, of uh, September, we're going to have a bigger deficit than what we started with. And it's going to be tar minus 30, or sorry, minus 26.5. Uh, uh, the two of these added up. 30 to September, we have minus 26.5 million in the deficit. Again, straightforward. October, we've made a quarter of a million in profit. So I've reduced my deficit by a little bit here. Minus 26.25. 31st of October is going to be the exact same as the 1st of November. Big deficit. And we put ourselves in even more of a deficit. So we're going to be minus 41 million by the end of November. So 30th of November rolls around, the company is in minus 41 million of debt. That's their closing cash. They owe the money to the bank money, whatever, minus 41 million. That is a cash flow forecast. You take the income, you total it up, usually there's one, maybe two. You take the expenditure, the outflows, and you just basically list them. One of them might take a little bit of work requirements. The rest of them are just basically copy the number that you see. You add it up for each month, and you find the difference between the inflows and the outflows. And there we have them there. How much did you start the month with? And if he's overspent by this amount, therefore this is what was left. It's a deficit of minus 8.25. You end one month and you start one month with the exact, you start the next month with the exact same, and you just repeat the process. This is what you started the month with, this is what you overspent with the month, there we go. This is what we started the month with. We had a little bit of profit here, over three quarters of a million, and so our deficit was slightly reduced. Go on, repeat the exact same thing again until the end of November with minus 41 million. You were asked to comment at the end of this. It's a three mark question. The comment, obviously, are talking about the fact that the, uh, you know, just it's just obviously what you would see. It's a charity, and they're putting themselves into massive debt. They have big expenditures, and so their debt at the end is minus 41 million. You'd say that's obviously a very negative thing. The company won't be able to uh, pay off their expenses in the long run. Um, you would probably talk about the fact that out of their inflows, 95% of it is being donated. And obviously they're a charity, so it's important that they donate a large amount of their inflow. But that's probably an unsustainable number. It would probably be better for them to donate 85% or 80%. Because at the moment they have all these other expenses that they need to pay for. And they're not able to pay a few million for expenses, especially for the sponsorship, if they're giving out 95% of the money that's coming into them. So that would be my uh, comment. I would say that the company is in big debt and it would actually probably be in their best interest to hold on to a little bit more of their donations um, because otherwise the charity is not able to function. Uh, that's just commenting. And all of this is just showing that you can see that they're in massive debt and that they have income, but their expenditure is too high and they need to reduce it. And so uh, that would just be my uh, you know, my analysis for this question. 
Uh, hopefully that's straightforward. That's a cash flow question.